Amity Blight, a character we've all grown to know as part of the iconic cast of The Owl House. But who is Amity, really? And is she a good character? Let's discuss this. The thing with Amity is this. Part of the point of The Owl House was to pave the way for LGBTQ representation in animated children's media. And to do that, it wanted to feature a gay relationship with the main character. To do that, you need the main character to have a love interest. And I don't think I'm going out on a limb here when I say Amity was created specifically to be Luce's love interest. That's her point. Amity exists to send a message. And is there something wrong with that? No. But when the motivation behind her character is different, it can come out awkward. While every other character in the Owl House was created simply to be a character, Amity has a different motivation behind her, which can make her feel like less of a character. The thing is, Lumity is the most interesting part of Amity's character. I don't think a single person on Earth was more interested in Amity rebelling against her mother than Luce and Amity being a couple. And that isn't to say that Amity is a bad character, but I do think because her relationship with another character is the best part of her, alone she doesn't stand out in the same way the other characters do. Luce, Ida, King, Hunter, Willow, Gus, and even the Collector, who didn't get a lot of screen time, are all more interesting characters to me than Amity has ever been. Because, again, the point of Amity's character, and the most organic and heartfelt part of her character, is her relationship with Luce. That leaves her feeling a little dependent on Luce to be interesting. Let's analyze who Amity is in her arc across all three seasons of the show. Amity Blight Character Analysis Amity is a student at Hexide who is forced by her parents from a very young age to only associate with high-class witches. She strives for success, to be the top student at school, and to one day join the Emperor's Coven, but likely not because she actually wants all that, and more because it's the expectation her mother has for her. Amity is hardworking, and unlike a lot of Mean Girl characters, actually deserves to be the top of her class. She's not cheating or anything, she is genuinely just the best. Amity has a habit of picking on Willow, her former friend, for being bad at abomination magic. She helps herself feel better about herself by bullying Willow. We see that Amity has a strong moral compass when it comes to cheating. She is fundamentally against it. She loses it when she thinks that Willow is cheating with a fake abomination, which she is, and when she realizes that Lilith cheated for her in the witch's duel between her and Luce, she immediately quits. Victory means nothing to Amity if it is not earned. When something gets in her way, she has a habit of painting that person as an issue, like how she made Luce out to be a bully or Willow out to be a target. As we get to know Amity a little better, we see that she is more sensitive and insecure than she let on. She reads Azora books and is totally embarrassed by Luce seeing her diary. She is a very self-conscious person and a very private person. She doesn't open herself up to anyone, so when she feels violated, that frustration comes out in aggression. But as she and Luce become more comfortable around each other, Amity's temperament cools and she becomes somewhat more laid back, but still reserved. Eventually, Amity is forced to open up and confront her issues. She and Luce have to travel to Willow's Mindscape after Amity tries covering up a mistake. There, the old friend's past is confronted, and Amity admits to her mistakes in her treatment of Willow. This is the first episode in which we really see her coming out of her shell. Following this is the episode Enchanting Gromfright, in which we see Amity being self-conscious about facing her fear. Here we see her still struggling to open up and be vulnerable. But, although she's not completely come out of her shell, we see in the end after Lou says she'll be the Grom date, that she feels more safe and comfortable. I think it's cool for the character whose main struggle was being vulnerable to be put in the most vulnerable position of all, being in love. And by the next episode, that comfortableness has become full-on gay panic. Amity spends this episode pretty much being in love the whole time, and we also see that hard-working spirit of hers shine through as the team works together to win at a sport. And we now see that Amity has truly opened up, she is more energetic, talkative, and awkward than she normally is. She finally feels safe within this group of people, and so we really begin to see the real Amity. She is openly being vulnerable and expressive now. That's Amity's arc in season 1, and I think it's actually pretty good. Her story is the story of a girl who hides her insecurities behind bullying and anger, learning to break down those walls. She begins to open up, be vulnerable, and finally allow herself to feel safe and loved. Now, onto her arc in season 2. This season really shows us how much control Amity's mother has over her. Despite how much Amity has grown in the friend group, the moment her mother is in the room, she becomes the same guarded, obedient girl from early season 1. It's the danger Odalia puts loose in, which motivates Amity to finally stand up to her. This is the first time we see Amity honestly being bold and confident, not the fake confidence that was really just lashing out to hide her insecurities that we see in season 1 bully Amity. Here, she is powerful, and she is righteously angry, and she and Luce work together to defeat Odalia. In Amity's next episode, she and Luce work together in the library. Amity has a special pass for this specific section in the library, which, if she's not careful and responsible, she will lose. She does, and it upsets her greatly. Amity still has her self-esteem somewhat attached to her success. The girls get emotional. 
In this raw, painful scene, we see how hard it can be to begin to really deepen a relationship and feel those growing pains of being more vulnerable with each other than ever before. But they have grown, and to show this, Amity enlists the help of her older siblings to dye her hair. This symbolizes the growth she's gone through to become the person she is now, her own person free of her mother's control and free of her own fear and anger holding her back. After this, Luce and Amity have a short scene which ends in Amity kissing Luce on the cheek and promptly running away flustered. If she wasn't sure before, Luce is most definitely in love with Amity now. She spends the next episode figuring out how to ask her out. Hootie helps by sending the girls down his cheesy tunnel of love. Luce is insecure and burns it all down, much to the dismay of Amity. Then Luce gets over her own nerves and they ask each other out. They nervously hold hands. Lumity is canon. Since Amity is still, in her core, a perfectionist who wants to be the best at everything, she spends the next episode committing to trying to figure out how to be a good girlfriend. She sees some texts from a sick Luce and misinterprets them, jumping to insecurity and being positive that Luce is mad at her. Then she realizes she was wrong and it's just Luce being Luce, and after that she and Hunter duke it out in a masterfully animated magic brawl. We see how Amity's abomination skills have improved from her abilities in Season 1. Ultimately, it's a threat to Luce from Hunter that causes Amity to back down. When Amity goes back to the Owl House, she is treated with a big hug from her loving girlfriend. In the next Amity episode, the girl's relationship is tested. Amity is positive Luce is hiding something, and she has a video she could watch to find out what, but doing so would mean going behind Luce's back. Amity confides in Willow for advice, and the two spend some time together. Amity decides not to view the footage and instead comes to Luce to discuss it, setting a healthy example for communication. Next, Amity wants to join a tournament her dad competed in when he was younger. She works hard, but doesn't win because her dad intervenes. She talks to Alador about his neglect, and the two begin the road to recovering their relationship. Then, Amity talks to Luce, who has been having a rough day. Luce opens up to Amity about her dad's death, and Amity offers comfort. Then, in Clouds on the Horizon, Luce rescues Amity from being grounded in the two chair, their first real kiss. Amity stands up to her mother once again. Amity's arc for season 2 was okay, but her personal development had a habit of being overshadowed by Lumity content. Combine that with the already squeezed season where every episode counts and so many interesting plot points are happening, and Amity gets a little lost in language. In season 3, thanks to them, Amity leads the gang in trying to prepare a surprise for Luce. Then in For the Future, we see Basha's reaction to Amity returning. She becomes clingy and desperate, and Amity is uncomfortable around her. And in Watching and Dreaming, we see Amity and Luce in the future, where they are happy and together. The end. So, Amity's arc for season 3? It wasn't much. There wasn't a lot of time to work with. Her arc had pretty much already wrapped up beforehand. All in all, Amity's character arc is this. In season 1, she grows from being a bitter, rude person to a person who is capable of being sensitive and genuine. She comes out of her shell and finds herself a space to feel safe. Then, her main arc in season 2 is maturing through the struggles of a relationship. She and Luz strengthen their bond, and Amity grows more confident in herself. And come season 3, she is comfortable in her place in the world, even if she doesn't know what the future holds. And while this looks good on paper, I think her arc is actually better in concept than how the show executed it. Because the way her arc is now is somewhat unsatisfying. It's not that Amity's character is all bad, but she just could have been so much better. So what exactly is wrong? Let's get into it. Amity's arc from the episode, I Was a Teenage Abomination, to Through the Looking Glass Ruins, is her learning to escape her old self of bullying, anger, uncertainty, insecurity, and doing her mother's bidding. After this development, she is essentially a clean slate. She has finally broken free of her past and now is ready to be her own person. So, following all of season 1 and early season 2, we don't really know who this Amity is. Is she a level-headed leader, a kind and sensitive friend to all, a fun-loving adventurer? Now that she's out of her shell and ready to find her individuality, who is Amity really? This should have been the focus of her arc, figuring out who she is outside of her mistakes and her insecurities and her mother's control, discovering herself, being honest with herself, and dealing with something a lot of kids her age deal with, finding her identity. However, this wasn't the focus of her arc at all, because at the very end of Through the Looking Glass Ruins, which was the episode that marked Amity being fully free of everything behind her and becoming a whole new person, Amity kisses Luce on the cheek, and this moment is the beginning of the new direction on Amity's character. Following this point, Amity's main arc of development is maturing and growing more confident through her relationship with Luce. In season 1, although she did like Luce near the end there, her main arc was still coming out of her shell. But now Amity's arc and Lumity's arc meld together and all of Amity's main growth comes from Lumity. This isn't bad per se, but the fact that Amity is essentially a clean slate and the first thing she does is basically a whole new character is have a romance with someone that's questionable. Season 1 broke down who Amity was, tearing down her walls and freeing her from her abuse. Season 2 should have been building her up, crafting her new identity. Season 1 broke her down to nothing, ready to be developed, but instead, on top of that blank slate, instead of development, was a romance. This means that Amity is essentially being developed through her romance with Luce alone. She is reliant on the growth of their relationship for most of her own growth, and she becomes a character who is very dependent on Luce to be much of a character at all. 
This is the core of the issue with Amity, and her character suffers for it throughout the show. After season one, she becomes very reliant on Luz to feel fleshed out and genuine. Her interactions with Luz are the most interesting part of her character, and clearly the part the most heart was put into. How would I have handled Amity differently? I can't exactly critique her without providing an alternate storyline. I would keep her season one arc overall the same, except maybe give her a few more personality traits and quirks that I would establish early on. Come season two, I would follow the episode through the Looking Glass Ruins with a Zuko alone type episode for Amity. You know this episode of Avatar, where Zuko is, well, alone. Separated from the entire rest of the cast, he has no choice but to confront himself. It's a great episode for character development in an episode format Amity would have hugely benefited from. In this episode, Amity would spend the episode separated from the rest of the cast, including Luce, as she tries to figure out who she is. While she was off alone, Amity would meet the Bat Queen, from whom she would receive her palisman, Ghost. This would line up perfectly since Ghost's first appearance as Amity's palisman isn't until Eclipse Lake anyway. Some sort of problem occurs which Amity is forced to solve by herself. She grows frustrated and begins to lash out like she does in early season 1. Her old anger takes a hold of her. She realizes she is relapsing to her old bitter self and becomes defeated. She feels terrible and admits to herself she doesn't know who she is. She is confused and scared, and now that everything has changed, she doesn't know what her future holds. It is this admission which causes Ghost to accept her. With the help of her new palisman, she solves the problem. She and Ghost finish the rest of the quest with relative ease. They have fun and Amity smiles and laughs as she spends time with her new friend. Then, since this episode would contain more growth for Amity personally than through the Looking Glass Ruins did, this would be the episode where she dyed her hair purple. Quit staring at me like a ghost, palisman cat! I'm scared, okay? Is that what you want to hear? I'm scared because I don't know who I am! For my whole life, my mother controlled me. I've been the person my parents wanted me to be. I've been being someone else for my entire life. But now, <laughs> with Luz and Gus and Willow, I finally feel safe. It's weird, but I finally feel like I can be myself. But I don't know who that self is, and it's scary in this new space. It's scary. What if I get hurt again? What if I become someone else for someone else again? I'm scared of my future. I'm scared of facing the fact that I don't know who I am. Thanks for listening, ghost. <laughs> okay, okay. I've been so scared of facing myself. But now that I've said it all out loud, it doesn't feel so big. Maybe it's okay that I don't know who I am yet. Maybe I don't need to know what my future holds. This is, of course, a loose idea of a concept in Climax, but this would be beneficial for Amity's character for these reasons. One, it will help her feel more dynamic if we see her relapse a bit to her anger. No redemption arc is smooth, and a surge of that bitter anger coming out again will make her feel even more real and it would cause her to stop and reflect on her arc. Two, in the show, Ghost just kind of appears. In Amity's arc of realizing she doesn't know what she wants for her future is a sideline part of her character which deserved to shine. This episode would give Ghost a proper introduction and for Amity to fully discuss her motivation and thoughts. Three, Amity deserved to have a mental breakdown. In season one, she was an insecure person who took out that pain on others. In this imaginary episode, we see her fighting against her own confusion and uncertainty again, lashing out in anger and frustration. Then, when she slows down and realizes what she is doing, she is forced to be vulnerable with herself. She has to admit to herself how scared she is, how nervous about her own future. This would have been so poetic, because in season 1, we see her learn to be vulnerable around others. But in this adventure, she has to truly open up and be honest with the one person she hasn't confronted yet. Herself. This kind of self-reflection episode was exactly what Amity needed. In this episode, she would speak her thoughts out loud, that way the themes of facing her own fear are not lost in subtext like a lot of Amity's development is. 4. This episode would establish Amity as the adventurous type, which would match with her epilogue self and give her a character type to focus on. The rest of the season would include some more Amity-focused episodes, not just Lumity-focused episodes. An episode where she interacts with Gus would be great for both of them. And in general, more episodes where she gets to solve problems and be an active player in the main plot. I would rework some of her more defining moments to be less reactive and more independent. 
like in knock knock knocking on Hootie's door, she gets kidnapped and forced into the tunnel of love. I would change it so she actually was already going to the owl house to ask Luce out. This would even work with the plot of the episode because the point is that Luce is being self-conscious for no reason, so this would be even more ob obvious if Amity was already about to ask Luce out. Before that, in Enchanting Grom Fright, Amity's worst fear materializes in the form of Grom, and her only fear we see is her fear of being rejected by Luce. And I would have used this opportunity to show more of Amity's fears, such as to display and discuss her fear of vulnerability or other aspects of her character. I would give Amity time to show her training in her abomination magic and improving instead of only seeing it rarely. And in season 3, I wouldn't do this whole Basha plotline that happened. This plotline is bad because it's supposed to show how Amity has grown by placing her next to Basha, who hasn't changed at all. But it's really just Basha being massive clinger vibes the whole episode and Amity just looking uncomfortable and not actually getting more development. Basically, I would develop Amity as an individual, instead of just developing Lumity and giving Amity some side plots but no real character arc. So, what's my conclusion on Amity? Amity's okay. She's an okay character. She's not all bad, but she could have been so much more. I think that's honestly my frustration with Amity. If she was a bad character and everyone knew, it would be annoying, but at least that's it. She's a bad character, and we all go home. But Amity is not a bad character. She really has potential to be a good character if they had just flesh her out after season one. But instead, she has a habit of just feeling like the girlfriend character. And let's keep in mind, Amity was created to be Luce's girlfriend. She is a love interest. There's nothing actually wrong with a character being a love interest, as long as they have some sort of independence outside of their date. But like I said, the most interesting part of Amity is Lumity, and without Luce, Amity is underdeveloped and the weakest part of the cast. If they had just written Amity as her own character, she could be not just okay, but amazing. She already has themes of finding individuality, growing in her confidence, coming out of her shell, and being uncertain about what she wants for her future, which are all great traits that are bound to make her relatable for kids her age. But unfortunately, a lot of that character ends up being drowned out under the development of Lumity. The Owl House wanted to send a message about representation, and that it did. But unfortunately, because Amity was created to send this message, I think she got a little consumed by the message and her relationship. So while Lumity is groundbreaking queer representation, it is not perfect since one of the members is much less developed than the other. Who is Amity, really? She could have been great.